the man she was dating at the time was involved in gangs and had a history of involvement with drugs. And I did not interview the stepfather, but he shot and killed Ms. Trezorati's boyfriend right in the house where they all lived. She hasn't been able to get an apartment. She did end up moving in with another gentleman whose background check was full of felonies and violence. He's not a violent person. He has a daughter of his own who is Isabella's age, who he sees. The parents are requesting that Mr. Patton be named joint managing conservatorship with a geographic restriction of Travis County and contiguous counties. Mr. Patton lives in Buda uh, in Hayes County and Ms. Trezorati lives in Bastrop County. Since the, those two counties uh, are not contiguous, they're requesting that the geographic restriction be based on Travis County, which is contiguous with both. For possession and access, the guardian ad litem's recommendation is that um, Ms. Trezorati have uh, the right to visit with the child up to two times per week for up to four hours and for the visits to be supervised by uh, Mr. Patton's mother, uh, Brittany Patton, or Mr. Patton's sister, Donnell Fabian. The guardian ad litem recommends that upon Ms. Trezorati securing a lease for her own apartment and passing three consecutive monthly uh, drug screenings with a hair sample, that Ms. Trezorati be granted um, the expanded standard possession and access schedule. Mr. Patton and Ms. Trezorati um, are requesting that Ms. Trezorati have a substantial visitation rights, but uh, Ms. Trezorati's work schedule uh, makes it difficult to construct a, an agreeable uh, visitation schedule. In terms of medical and dental support, the parents agree that Mr. Patton should continue maintaining medical and dental insurance for the child through his employer. And the parties agree that the actual cost of the child's coverage to Mr. Patton is $13.89 per month for medical and $9.02 per month for dental. On the issue of child support, parents are in agreement that they don't want either parent to be ordered to pay child support. In Mr. Patton's case, it's uh, his request is due to Ms. Trezorati's circumstances and um, his own ability to afford supporting the child on his income. And Ms. Trezorati's uh, request is uh, due to Mr. Patton's requested uh, status as custodial parent. So she wouldn't be requesting that he pay child support in that case. Both parents provided uh, their most recent pay stubs as evidence of income, and parties agree that guideline child support in Ms. Trezorati's case would be $687 per month. Ms. Trezorati has one other child um, with a different parent. Um, it's a nine-year-old son who normally lives with her, but due to the, the events in October, has been living with his father. And Mr. Patton, uh, in his case, guideline child support would be $865 a month after including credit for the medical and dental costs for the child. On the issue of child support arrears, Mr. Patton, oh, Your Honor, could I um, introduce States Exhibit 1 into evidence? It's the pay record for this case. Is there any objection to uh, the pay record, Mr. Patton or Ms. Trezorati? No, ma'am. No, thank you. Ms. Ms. Trezorati, uh, I'll need to hear your your uh, response. No, ma'am. State's exhibit number one is admitted. Your Honor, do I need to, to, to share my screen to exhibit the pay record, or can I just refer to it? You can just refer to it. Uh, I have it in front of me. Okay. The pay record shows that um, as of, of yesterday, March 3rd, 2024, uh, Mr. Patton has a balance of child support arrears in the amount of $4,373.08. Ms. Trezorati, on account of uh, Mr. Patton having um, possession of the child since the rendering of the temporary order, uh, Ms. Trezorati is requesting the release of the full amount of those arrears. Um, and for a child support judgment of uh, zero dollars. On the issue of retroactive support, uh, Mr. Ms. Trezorati is not requesting retroactive child support, medical support, or dental support. On the issue of non-disclosure, um, non-disclosure was ordered in the temporary order 
but Ms. Trezorati is not requesting non-disclosure at this time. The parties, the parents are also in agreement on um, no longer having the requirement of app close for, for communications. Given Ms. Tre uh, Ms. Trezorati's uh, circumstances, the, the parents are requesting that today's orders be temporary with a return date in six months on September 9th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. with the belief that at that time, um, Ms. Trezorati's circumstances will be uh, more stable and they'll better be able to address uh, final terms. I and mean, that's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, I, I am, um, I guess, oh, oh, I guess concerned uh, with Ms. Swinton's time. Um, if you could please call her, if you were gonna call her as a witness, uh, I'd ask that you do that now uh, versus trying to get testimony from the parents. Um, that way I can release Ms. Swinton um, yeah. from this hearing. Yes, Your Honor. May I call Ms. Swinton as a witness? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Swinton, could you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Jennifer Swinton. And uh, what is your, your role in this case, Ms. Swinton? I was assigned as a guardian ad litem to represent the suggestions, recommendations to the court about the best interests of the child. And Ms. Swinton, if you could um, summarize your findings and recommendations in this case. Yes. Um, basically, um, there is kind of a tumultuous <laughs> marriage um, that uh, pretty much ended um, in April of 2023, kind of, um, there was domestic violence involved, there's an order of protection like you, you mentioned. When um, Ms. Trezorati moved out of the relationship, out of the um, joint living situation, she went to live with her, her and her stepfather. According to all the records I read and all the collaterals I interviewed, the man she was dating at the time um, was involved in gangs and uh, had a history of involvement with drugs. And um, her parents did not at the time and um, were concerned about uh, domestic abuse, evidently. And again, I, I can only surmise as I did not interview the stepfather, but um, he shot and killed. Ms. Trezorati's boyfriend right in the house where they all lived. And then he was arrested, put in prison, and then subsequently Ms. Tre Trezorati's mother committed suicide. So all this happened within, you know, at the, the very outset of, of my assignment to the case. And, you know, my heart goes out to Ms. Trezorati. I've been working with her to try to get back on her feet. And part of getting back on her feet has been finding her own place and a way to make a living and afford her own apartment, which has been very difficult. And she did end up, she hasn't been able to get an apartment. She did end up moving in with another gentleman whose background check was full of felonies and violence. And um, I did not feel comfortable having Isabella in that home. The other thing that happened is that um, Ms. Trezorati, she took the very initial uh, drug screening, but the subsequent one, um, when I was becoming to have more concerns based on people I was talking to, the subsequent test, she adamantly refused. And that gave me concern. What I can say about Mr. Patton is that he's been hundred percent solid. Um, I've been to his home. He's had the same job for 10 years. He owns a home with his friend. His extended family provides wraparound services, if you will. To the little girl, for example, his mother provides free daycare, and she's more than welcoming to Ms. Trezorati to come do the visits there. The His cares a lot for Ms. Trezorati, and they have no desire to cut her out of Isabella's life. They just want Isabella to be in the safest place with the least turmoil, um, and Ms. Trezorati needs perhaps some treatment, perhaps some time to get back on her feet, and to find a place where she's not reliant on on situation with somebody who is not a good um, influence on her daughter. We did, I, I heard you mention, um, Mr. Chukar, I heard you mention some steps. We In our custody um, evaluation, we actually outlined stages that she could climb to meet to get back to more equal time. And um, I think you'll notice the first the, 
kind of as you mentioned, give her some time. So, for example, uh, the step two after after what we had, the first step was the two times a week, four hours a week supervised by Mr. Patton's family or an approved uh, kids exchange network provider. Stage two, we recommended beginning on October 1st, where she would move to unsupervised visitation and that her time would increase um, every Sunday and Saturday and Sunday for up to six hours and plus every Thursday for up to two hours and then so on. So January 1st, she would uh, get even more time and March 1st, it would basically uh, revert back to the uh, standard visitation. So that that um, that is our recommendation. Isabella seems like a very happy, very smart, very energetic little girl. And she's in a good home. She's in a good place right now. Thank you, Ms. Swinton. Is there, is there anything else uh, you would like the court to be aware of in this case? No. Well, no the, 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 the family, the two, the parents have, for the most part, at least, at least after initially, after initially, got, they have seemed to be worked out a, a more civil way to engage about, about Isabella. Could you put a little bit more detail in that regard? Um, there was initially one allegation from Ms. Trezorati about her hand being scratched when a cell phone was knocked out of her hand, but that was the only the only problems. I, some of the texts both complained about about too many texts, or but but the bottom line is that Mr. Patton has made Isabella available to Ms. Trezorati, even bringing her to Ms. Trezorati's shop that she's a manager there at the retail shop that you saw on, online and um and uh, like i said his mother has offered for her to come when she's watching her during the day when mr Tr uh, Patton is at work so that's the kind of thing it's the, the cooperation when it comes to the visiting i have not ha heard any bad mouthing on by either party of the other party which mm -hmm. is is wonderful uh, you know i think there's concern definitely from both parties. They, they're they not a good couple, <laughs> but uh, I think that they're both, a lot of people have said that they're both very bonded to um, Isabella and that, you know, they both want to be a, a big part of her lives. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Swinton. Uh, no mm -hmm. further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Swinton, uh, in reading your report, uh, it seems to suggest that since uh, the change in the status of this child residing with Ms. Trezorati and now residing with her father, Mr. Patton. It seems to suggest that perhaps Ms. Trezorati has not been as engaged in parenting as Mr. Patton. Is that uh, is that a reasonable conclusion to make right it now? It is. It is, Your Honor. Is it fair to say that Ms. Trezorati has um, not had a motivation to be presently involved? Or is there something else going on that keeps her from being actively involved as a parent? Your Honor, um, I can't, I, I, obviously I can't speak to her true motivation, but I do know that there are barriers, there have been barriers. I, I, I don't know how motivated she is to see her daughter. I mean, she doesn't see her son from another relationship often either. So I, I don't, I don't know 100% about her motivation. What I do know are the barriers that she's been coming up against, which is Having to work 12 hour days, um, not having the money to get her own place that is would be safe for Isabella. And perhaps, like I said, perhaps some substance abuse. And I and again, I can't, I cannot prove that. I only worry because of the um the refusal to take a drug test and just some of the um things that some of the references have said about seeing on social media and 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 things and the just the background she's come from in that in that home. Um, I have concerns about her being okay. All right. So um, in terms of making parenting decisions with Mr. Patton, is it also fair to say that Mr. Patton has been by basically making those primary decisions, important decisions for uh, the child? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Where have the parents been exchanging the child? Um, I'll probably get into that testimony with them, but as far as you know, mm -hmm. where was that exchange? You had? Yes. Well, um, sometimes they would meet at a park oh. and sometimes I know they used to meet at an HEB. Then when I got involved, they were meeting more at a park. And again, it was very sporadic, very short visits when they happened. Um, but then 
I do I do believe what I've been told by Mr. by both of them is that Mr. Patton would bring Isabella to Ms. Trezorati's store and they would visit there sometimes. Not often, but that and then I I'm not sure if Ms. Trezorati ever took advantage of the maternal grandmother's offer to have her come visit there. I know that I urged her to do so. Thank you. Mr. Patton, did you have any questions for Ms. Swinton before I excuse her? No, I do not. Thank you, though. Okay. Ms. Trezorati, did you have any questions for Ms. Swinton? No. Okay. Ms. Swinton, uh, thank you for your testimony and your report. Uh, I'm going to order that you be dismissed from the case, and uh, you are excused. Thank you. you. Law. Thank you. Mr. Shukir, you have another witness? Mr. Honor, may I call Mr. Patton as a witness, please? Okay. Mr. Patton, uh, were you able to hear the entirety of uh, Ms. Swinton's testimony? Yes, sir. Are there any uh, parts of Ms. Swinton's testimony that you disagreed with? No, I agree with all of it. So so last October, you, you had the hearing uh, on the 11th, and then soon thereafter, um, Isabella started to stay with you uh, every day, basically. Is that correct? That is correct. Could you provide the court with some background on when that happened and the circumstances that led to it happening? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I, the date, because I remember the dates, it was October 24th um, was the day that Allie's day that the murder happened. Um, since that day, we Allie had just, just like came to a, an agreement that it's best for Bella to be with me since October 24th. And Mr. Pan, when you say Allie, are, are you referring to Ms. Trezorati? Yes, Ms. Trezorati. I'm sorry. And, and but what happened? Uh, what was your child staying primarily with, Miss Trezorati? Uh, we had a 50 50 split, I believe it was more of like a 55 to Miss Trezorati and 45 to me. But yes, it, it was more of like a split, yes. And, and was that schedule was that uh part of your divorce decree? Uh, so we were never married, but it was more of something that the whenever we went to get the protective order or something that the judge, uh, me and Ali had made that schedule ourselves, but we pre presented that to the judge then. And he said that was something that would work out. So he just we stuck with that. Understood. And did that was that schedule working out uh, well for for your for you guys? Yes, I want to say it works for me. I don't want to speak on behalf of Miss Trezorati, but it did work well for me and my work schedule. And. Um, is that schedule something that you and Ms. Trezorati would be able to follow uh, in, in the future, starting next month? To be honest, I don't think so. Um, it would still work for me, but I, I know that Ms. Trezorati works a lot. Um, she's trying to get back on her feet, so I don't think it would, I, I don't want to speak on her behalf, but no, I don't think it would necessarily work for her. And um, so since, um, since last October, what has the visitation schedule been like for Ms. Trezorati? Um, it's just been, uh, so I've had Bella full time, um, no overnight stays for Miss Trezorati. It's just been, um, more of like, if she has an off day, she'll see Bella for a few hours. Um, and like Miss Jennifer, Miss Swin said, um, I would take, um, Isabella to Miss Trezorati's job sometimes and she'd have her on her break or for like an hour or two while she's in the back as well. Um, but it's probably been, uh, I counted the times. It's probably been between 10 and 12 visits since October um, for a few hours each time. Okay. Um, uh, just looking at last week as an example, uh, do, you, do you recall if any visitations took place last week? There was a visit. Uh, I don't know if it was last week, but it was, yes, I want to say it was last week for two hours. Yes. Okay. And how did you uh, arrange for that visit? Uh, me and Miss Trezorati, uh, she had got off and she just was on her way, I guess, back to where she was staying. So she just offered, she was saying she's free to come and see Bella. And so where did the visitation take place? It was at a park in my neighborhood. Okay. So it was in, that... in Hayes County. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. And uh, is that where the visitations normally take place or does it just depend on the day? It just depends. It's very sporadic. There's not really been any consistency. Okay. Has there been any consistency in like the time of day when the visits have occurred? And is and is that due to Ms. Trezorati's work schedule? Yes, sir. Have all of the visits taken place in Hayes County? Um, most of them were actually in Travis. There's only been probably like two or three in Hayes County. Where in Travis County? 
where she used to work. It was in South Park Meadows at the Route 21 that she used to work at. Okay. Or in that so, South Park Meadows area, like a restaurant or somewhere like that. And do, do those visits at uh, Ms. Trezoretti's workplace, do they occur after the store closes or during a break? Or how does that work? Uh, they'd be both. Um, there's been, I would say it's 50-50. It's been during her break. And then she'd be able to uh, have her in the back sometimes as well. And then a lot of the time, or not a lot, but like the other half, it was like after it closed, um, she was performing like closing duties. And then she would have Bella for a few hours there as well. And Ms. Trezorati's uh, work uh, prior to last October, was she working somewhere else with a different schedule? I, we broke up. It, we broke up February of 2023 or end of January 2023. And I don't know um, anything about uh, work besides when she started working at Route 21, which was, it was after we broke up. So I don't, I don't okay. know what her schedules looked like since, yeah. Okay. Um, but um, last year, um, you guys were following a schedule where Ms. Trezorati had the child for about 55% of the time? That's correct, yes, sir. And she was able to to, to do that without conflicts with her work schedule? Yes, sir. Okay. But Mr. Patton, if you, if uh, whatever the visitation schedule is that's that's ordered the court, that it may also include a stipulation that if you and Ms. Trezorati agree on an additional visitation uh, or an adjusted visitation that you're able to do that? Yes. I I, I want to have like Bella. Um, yeah. I want, I want to see Bella as much as she can. Yes. Okay. And if, if you propose um, a uh, schedule uh, ordered by the court, do you have an idea of what that schedule might look like? Um, I kind of do. So what would work for me again, because I have a con consistent work week, um, I would have Bella pretty much Saturday night um, after I get off at 6 p.m. And so I'd pick her up Saturday night and then keep her to Wednesday morning. Okay. And then um, would you be requesting uh, visitations for, for holidays, uh, the, your child's birthday? Yes. Okay. Where are you currently exchanging are you have you had any um I'm sorry has Ms. Trezorati have had any um visitations with the child since last October where you were not present? Yes, there's been a couple. Yes. Okay. And where did where did James the child? At uh, the South Park Meadows Route 21 where she was working at. Okay. And does that uh, exchange location does that work pretty well for for both of you? Yeah, it worked uh, at the moment. I think she's now working at a Route 21 in Bastrop County. Um, so. I don't know how it convenient it would be for her, but it's still convenient for me to meet South Austin, yes, or South Park Meadows, yeah. Okay. And the, the guardian ad litem, she she provided testimony as to her understanding of um, you and Ms. Trezorati, your, your ability to communicate with each other. How, how would you characterize? Um, I think since, like, everything happened in October, bef before that, it was very... Um, back and forth. We didn't really see eye to eye. Um, since October of 2023, there's been no arguments, no back and forth. It's just, I think we both agree that whatever's best for Isabella is what we need to agree upon. And and I think that what Jennifer said is like, we've come a long way with communicating with each other in, in a good way. Okay. Are you confident that if um, you and Ms. Trezorati, you know, at the, ex at the expiration of your, your protective order, are you sure that you and Ms. Trezorati would be able to communicate amicably without any harassment, or threats, or, or violence if um, you had each other's phone numbers and home addresses and uh, were able to communicate freely with each other? Yes, I, I do think that we'd be able to do that really well. Okay, what would you say is, has made the difference? At uh, some point, that wasn't what was happening. What would you say that has changed? To be honest, it was me getting over the relationship that we had, um, me moving on and just putting Bella first is what changed it for me. Okay. And is there anything else you want the court to be aware of in this case, Mr. Patton? No, I think Jennifer made everything um, that I had, all the concerns I had, uh, she brought them to light. Um, it's just more of uh, making sure that if Ali, uh, Ms. Trezorati is getting custody back of Bella that the people that she's around are just safe 
uh, good influences and and that Bella's in a safe area as well. Okay. And Mr. Patton, I, I just realized I need to ask a few more follow-up questions. Miss Miss Swin, she her record was for uh, Miss Trezorati to have supervised visits with your child. So supervised by your, your mother or your sister. Um, it sounds like or I won't speak for you. Do, do you agree with that recommendation or, or, or do you? Know? I, I agree. Um, I, I don't think Allie needs, cause Allie's a great mother. She's always been a great mother. It's just what's gone through her, like going happen through her life and the people she kind of associates with is the only concerning thing. So I don't think she needs supervised visits, but I do. I, I mean, I think not supervised visits forever. I think for the temporary time, yes, it's, it's a good thing. Um, but no, I don't think she really needs to be supervised with her kids. I think she takes great care of them. And just for, for clarification, are, are you saying you agree with the recommendation for the temporary? The yes, that is the correct. Temporary order? Okay. Yes, sir. Did you agree with that recommendation? I've never had any thought that Ali and Ms. Trezorati is doing drugs. Um, I, I don't see it a bad thing for her to make make her pass drug tests, but no, I don't have a concern with her doing drugs. I've never had that thought or feeling or anything. So would you characterize your position on that as, as neutral? I'm pretty or... neutral with that one just because um, I'm on board with what Miss because Jennifer is great with her recommendations. So I'm on board with what she wants, but it's not a concern to me, but I, I guess I'm neutral with it. Yes. Um. Okay, so at this point, is there anything else you'd want the court to be aware of? No, not that it's on the top of my mind. Uh, no, no, sir. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Patton, did you and, and Ms. Trezorati engage in, say, electronic visits uh, since there's a distance? You live in different counties. Did the child have electronic uh, access to her mother? Yes, she does. Yes. Okay. And how often does that occur? I would say it's a couple of times a week, maybe two or three times a week. And as is it a schedule or just whenever Miss Trezorati calls and yeah, so uh, my daughter actually will ask for her mother as well, so we'll give her a call. Um, but it's really when Miss Trezorati has time. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I do need a little bit more clarification on your uh, on your testimony about having supervised access between Ms. Trezorati and the child. Why is that a concern? Why does Ms. Trezorati need someone supervising her, her visits with her child? I think it was more recommendation from Ms. Swinton, but it's because of, I think, the people that she associates herself with. All right. So if, if Ms. Trezorati were to uh, have a day visit, you know, exchange, and she can have a day with her, with her child to do whatever they would like to do, um, do you have a concern that you would be placing um, Isabella in a, a dangerous situation if she's alone with her mother? No, not a, not alone. No. Is is your concern more if if Isabella has overnight visits with her mother? No, I don't have a concern of any overnight visits. It's just more of a concern of like if if Miss Trezorati is having the people that she associates herself with around our daughter is the main concern. Okay. Do you uh, know the person that she is currently residing with? No, I don't know them at all. No, okay. just from what Miss Swinton has brought to light. Okay. Were you surprised to learn that uh, the current partner that Miss uh, Trezorati is, is living with does have uh, uh, does have a criminal history that includes uh, some violent uh, criminal background? Uh, no, it did not surprise me. It did not. Okay. No. Now, Ms. Swinton did have uh, some concerns with regards to uh, maybe there was some alleged drug usage by Ms. Trezorati. And if you could clarify your your testimony regarding any history of, of drug usage, is, is that something you uh, that you had experience with Ms. Trezorati, that she had uh, past use of, of drugs? No. So me and Ms. Trezorati dated for six years from like 2017 to 2023. And there is no concern or even drug use from her. Uh, I can't speak on what happened after 2023, but I've never been concerned of her using drugs, no. Thank you. Mr. Trezorati, uh, Mr. Patton, he's testifying as a witness. So you have an opportunity to ask questions. Did you have any questions for Mr. Patton before you're called as a witness? I do. Okay. He said that 
when I saw Isabella last week that it was at a park, I wanted to ask if he was sure that that was where we met at last week when I saw Isabella, because to my recollection, he invited me to his home and I went there and we okay, so were all together. Ready. The, the question is, you want him to clarify the testimony regarding uh, where last week's visit occurred? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Patton? It was also at my house for a short period of time as well. Any other questions, Ms. Trezorati? No. All right, thank you. Mr. Shakari, you may call your next witness. Mr. Honor, may I call Ms. Uh, Trezorati as a witness, please? Yes, sir. Ms. Trezorati, uh, Mr. Patton provided some testimony as to your visitation schedule last year prior to the temporary order was it would you say it's fair to characterize it as um, a 55 45 split between you and and him yes and um how were, were you able to to maintain that schedule pretty consistently i try my best <clears throat> um we yeah yeah could, could you explain for the court what what that schedule looked like in general terms before the temporary order, Isabella was with him um, Sundays through Wednesday morning. And then one weekend, it was um, Friday evenings through Wednesday morning. Uh, is that one weekend per, per month? Yes. And so I Isabella was with you um, most weeks from Wednesday morning to, I'm sorry, is it Friday afternoon? One weekend a month, one Friday a month. Um, his mom would pick her up from Friday evening until the following Wednesday. Okay. And so um, while, while you were maintaining that schedule, um, you didn't require many changes to the, to the schedule. Uh, were you guys able to keep it pretty consistent week to week? I would say so. And um, did you have the same employer and same job? at that time as, as you do now? No, I worked for Sally Beauty Supply. And uh, when did you start working for your current company? The end of September of 2023. And um, in September of last year, was your work schedule about the same as it is now or has it changed? I have gotten a promotion since I was hired on here. So I do work more than um, what I was initially hired on to do. And at, at your prior employer, were you working full-time 40 hours a week? Yes, sir. And, and is your schedule very different now than it was at your prior employer? I do work more here. I do work more here. Can, can you provide an estimate of like how many hours you work per week now compared to a prior employer? I would say I work closer to 70 hours a week here than the 40. You're Previous employer? That, my previous sir. Okay. Do you expect that you will continue working 70 hours a, a week or may it change in the future? No, I, I hope not. Um, but the part of that is because I need to hire a team here. I also just moved stores um, due to the one in South Park Meadows closing. So I work at the store in Bastrop, um, which is where I live now. Um, and it's a much more steady, consistent store. Um, but again, I have to hire a, a couple more managers and then I will be able to work my 40 hours, have my two days off a week, you know, not have to cover the shifts where people are calling out or when somebody quits. So um, if you're able to reduce your hours 40 a week, um, would you want to have a schedule like what you had last year? So I would like to, however, you know, I don't have any support anymore. Um, my mom, my mom uh, helps me a lot <laughs> um, with my kids. So um, I don't have a lot of help at all, actually. I don't, I have nobody here in Texas. So for things like, um, you know, pickups and daycare and um, just helping me, like, I do have to work for a few hours uh, before, you know, you know, being with Isabella at night time, that kind of thing. How Lonnie's family helps him. I don't have that. I have nobody. Um, and I would never leave Isabella. I would never leave my kids with anybody that I don't know or trust. I wouldn't feel comfortable getting a babysitter or anything like that. Um, 
so because of that I I just I honestly don't know I just I would just need help and I don't know who to ask so but I, under, I'm sorry but I go ahead sorry, but I want that I want Bella under, under the certain under the current circumstances would you agree with uh, Miss Swinton's recommendation for uh, you having two visits uh, per week of, of four hours? I would like to not have a time limit and I would like to be able to see her more, but if that's the absolute minimum, then sure, yes. And would you be able to, to schedule those visits on the same day, same days every week? I can, I would do my best. I would, I would absolutely do my best. Uh, my boss is incredibly understanding, more or less. Um, and she tries to help me as much as she can. Um, if, if I could do one day, every single week, the same day, um, yeah, I would do that. You would, I, I would do that. I just can't lose my job because then I can't fill it. But um, yes, I'm, I'm, happy to ask my boss for that is is there one day of the week that that you can propose the beginning of the week is better just because I work in retail um and I am the store manager I have to be here for peak days and business hours um so I would maybe like a Monday or Tuesday maybe Wednesday would you be able to have a Monday Wednesday schedule where you you see Bella for four hours on Monday and four hours on Wednesday after work yeah, I mean, yeah, I can do that. Um, the only thing about Wednesdays is I am required, not required to be here on Wednesdays, but it's preferred that the store manager is here on Wednesdays just for specifics, which I can get into if I need to. But, oh, but I'm sorry, but I was going to say is I could do like the morning. Um, I know that that would be fine. Wednesday morning. Yeah, I'm it's preferred the store manager is in the store on Wednesdays because Wednesdays is evenings is when we do our promotional changes. And so the, the company asks that I do that. Okay. Can you propose a four hour time period for Wednesday? I mean, I could any time before maybe one o'clock. Um, I mean, uh, okay. in all honesty, like, I'll do anything for Isabella. Like, if I have to not be here at all on Wednesdays, I'll do that. Okay. And, and on Monday, is it the same? The morning is better than the evening? Mondays is fine. And it's, it's fine. It's whatever is best. Okay. So it, if Mr. Patton has four hours on Monday, that would work for his schedule. You'd likely be able to commit to that. Yes. Or, okay. All right. Um, and um, sorry, could you remind me when Bella's birthday is? So it's, it's cup. Um, would you like to have a, a scheduled visit with, with Bella for on her birthday? Well, yeah, yes, of course. However, Lonnie and I have already discussed this and he's having a party for her, which he said, I'm more than welcome to come to. Okay. Uh, do you know, do you know what time, like a block of time on her birthday that would work? Well, her party is not on her actual birthday. It's on, um, it's on a Sunday. The information's in, in my phone. Um, but on her actual birthday, yeah, I would want to see her. I mean, I'd like to have, I'm sure Lonnie and I, would work together okay all right and then uh miss swinton she um she recommended that the visitations be um supervised what, what is your opinion on that recommendation i don't think i need to be supervised with my children i am a really good mom um i was a good mom before all of the tragedy happened um I don't need somebody to watch me with my kids. I Lonnie's also said that his mom is not willing and doesn't want me to. She you know she's she's fine to me and and happy to help me get Isabella, like you know exchange Bella, but um, she doesn't want me at her home. Okay, um, it sounds like there's some concern from Miss Swinton about um, the the people who may be around Bella during visits. Do you? Uh, think some of those concerns are, are, are warranted, like that there might be friends or people in your life who, you know, might not be a great influence on her? I mean, I don't, ha again, I don't have anybody. I also don't live with anyone. I live alone in my own apartment, which I have the lease to. Um, and I, like I said, I don't live with a guy. Um, 
if I'm dating anybody that's personal and Lonnie and I both agree that, um, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't, if I'm going to be with Isabella, spending time with Bella, I want to do that just with Bella, um, you know, with my son, of course, but with, with me and Bella, um, I don't want to share my time with anybody else. How long have you had your apartment? It's been a couple of weeks now. I, um, asked Jennifer if she could come see it. And she said that she had a couple visits during that, that week. I'm not sure what week it was. And then I asked her again, uh, a second, that was, I asked her a second time and she said that she was already finished with the case. Um, so she just hasn't seen it. I've also offered to have Lonnie there multiple times, offered to FaceTime him, my home. Um, okay. So, so you, uh, you moved in the apartment two weeks ago and you're living there alone just to confirm. Yes. I live alone. Um, I don't know if it was like exactly two weeks ago, but it's been a, a, a few weeks. Uh -huh. And your name's on the lease? Yes. Is there anyone else's name on the lease? No. Okay. And what, what you to, to get your own apartment? I want my kids. Okay. Just check my notes here real quick. So there was some concern ex expressed about you um, not not agreeing to to do a drug test, um, and Mr. Patton provided testimony that he's not aware of um, you having any drug abuse issues. Could could you provide your own testimony yeah. on that su subject? Yeah. So, um, my car was stolen, um, maybe three and a half weeks ago now. Might be a month already. No, it was like three and a half weeks ago. And like, I think it was the Monday after my car was stolen. My car was stolen on the Friday. Um, Monday or Tuesday, Jennifer said that she needed me to go get the drug test that day. She said that was the final day, but she never told me previously that I needed to take a second drug test. And so I wasn't even aware that I needed to take another one because I said to her, I was like, well, I already took one um, and my car was stolen. Like I have no way to get there. I also have no money. Um, and she never got back to me about anything. Or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She just said that it was a requirement um, because she was trying to finish up her notes. And I told her, you know, my, my car was, um, I have no way to get anywhere right now. And um, she told Lonnie, or she had mentioned to him something about how if I was able to get to work, I should be able to get to the drug test if Isabella was important enough. Um, however, I missed work. I missed two days of work. And I also had to ask Lonnie for some money for an Uber one day, um, which he was kind enough to help me with, I think. Um, which, he, I mean, even if it wasn't that day specifically, he's he always helps if I need it. But I didn't have a car up until a week ago. Um, I have a police report. I have my car is still impounded. They, they found it. Well, someone found it. Um, but I miss lots of work and I have proof of that. Called my boss. She knows it. Okay. I told Lonnie. Ms. Ms. Trezorati, um, do you recall the date of the first drug test? No, I'm sorry. The, the, the month? December, maybe? Of 2023? Think, well, maybe. Okay. Um, so if, within the past few months, is that is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And do you recall what kind of uh, test it was? Was it a hair sample? Uh, it was a urine sample. Okay. And what, what were the results of that test? I mean, they never said anything to me, but... Okay. Um, I passed it. Was it explained to you why drug testing was required? No. I assume it just... Routine. Okay. All right. So to, to your recollection, Ms. Swinton didn't mention any anything in regards to why you were being tested. Correct. I mean, I have assumptions, but I mean, she didn't tell me. Okay. All right. Is there anything else, Ms. Trezorati, that you believe the court should be aware of in this case? Yeah. I, you know, um, Swinton and Mr. Patton both said that I, you know, I haven't been motivated to see my kids. Um, and that I haven't tried to see them or, um, you know, those kinds of things. And that's, that's incorrect. I, um, see Isabella as much as I can. I like, 
like I said, like if I, if I have, you know, I will go and see her wherever there they are. Lonnie has invited me to his home. Um, I've gone there multiple times and um, I try to FaceTime with Isabella as much as possible. Sometimes multiple times a day. I, and I have proof of that. I, if I don't answer, I tell Lonnie, you know, I'm at work or, or whatever's going on. I try to call him back. Um, I do work a lot. I, I know that. Uh, he also help out in a few other stores as well. I'm hoping to ask for a raise soon. And so, um, you know, I, I, I see Isabella as much as I can. Yes, Lonnie has brought her to my old store in South Park Meadows before, but that was because any chance that I get to have to see her, I tried to take it. Um, like leaving work the other day and driving by where he lives or like that area, I stopped and sit and, you know, saw her. I have a lot going on still um, and I don't do drugs. I don't have anybody, you know, I don't have friends. I have one friend who doesn't live here. I don't live with anybody. Oh, Miss Trezorati, I just realized I needed to ask you a follow-up question. Miss Swinton provided testimony as to to a boyfriend that you had uh, who um, who had a uh, record, it sounded like. Uh, do you know who mm -hmm. she's referring to? Yeah, I mean, I do have a boyfriend. I don't live with him. Um, but I don't know of any violent charges. She didn't tell me that. She told Lonnie that. He punched someone in the face. But I don't, I'm not aware of whatever. Would, yeah. Would would he would he be present during periods of visitation with Bella? No. No. Okay. And if that if that was in the court order that uh, he not be present, would you would you find that agreeable? Sure. I mean, I'm willing to do whatever I can to see my kids. However, I do want to just mention that he's not a violent person. He has a daughter of his own who is Isabella's age, who he sees. Um, hmm. He's a nice, he's a very, he's not a, yeah. You know. But, but yes. And, and he's, he, to be my children. So like, but again, if even without the courts or anything, if Lonnie and I hmm. were to agree on our own, then that's fine. Okay. Has he met Bella? Who? No, 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 no. Okay. At this point, is there anything else you believe the court should be aware of? I'm trying my best. You know, with everything that happened, I'm trying my best to get back on my feet and be there for my kids. I haven't um, spiraled like Lonnie and Miss Swinton were waiting for. And I'm not going to because I love my kids. So I'll do whatever I can to see them. No, no further questions, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Trezorati, in Ms. Swinton's report, she indicated that you have an older child and that child uh, was, you've placed that child with that child's father uh, during this transition time where you had, um, you didn't have housing, but now you do, right? You've, you've got a, a, an apartment. Is, does, does your older with you now? He doesn't live with me now. Um, I live in Bastrop and he goes to school in Austin and I, I don't want to change his schools or change his life anymore. Um, but I, same thing, you know, I try to see him and reach out as much as I can. And his, like I said, he's in school, he's in third grade. So I don't get to see him or Bella as much as I would like to, but I, it's not for lack of trying or lack of motivation either. How often do you see that child? And the reason for my question is uh, sometimes half siblings do well when they are together. And um, so do you have a schedule with that older child? No, his dad and I get along really well. So we don't have like a, a legal um, schedule. He lets me see. Oh, go ahead. He lets me see and, and talk to him when I am available. Okay. But again, my I work a lot. No, I do. I don't want to. When you see your, your other child, is it also just uh, during the day, no, no overnight visits? Yes. I did just recently get my apartment within the last few weeks. It did, 
fortunately take me a minute. Um, but I want to have them both. I would love to have them both overnight. Now, one of the recommendations made by Ms. Swinton was once you, you obtain your own, um, she also was recommending three consecutive monthly drug screenings. Um, but it seems to suggest that you have a, a standard visitation schedule once you had a stable residence. Um, now considering that, it sounds as though your your work schedule makes it difficult for you to have overnight possession of your children. Is that a fair statement? Unfortunately, it is. I, you know, again, I as soon as I can, um, you know, get another couple of managers hired, it won't be that way. I I just got this sir. Um, recently, and I just haven't had the opportunity to to hire people. But um, also, I will. My boss is. I yes, I I work too much. I know that, but she is understanding about what's going on, and she wants me to see my kids. And so I know that if I asked her in advance for a couple of days off, you know, I, I also have PTO that I'm holding on to to see them, you know, have some time. I know that I can can figure that out as long as I, you know, request it in advance. I would love to have them overnight. So it sounds from your testimony that um, you are available Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but better Monday and Tuesday. Is that, is that my, what, it, is that? So those are just um, the days that it would be better, like, uh, it, that would be easy to request off um, because it's the beginning of the week. We're slower in our store and I have to be here for the weekends and, and business hours. But again, if I request off time in advance, my boss is happy to give me that. And I do have enough people here that I, I could make that happen. Yeah. Now, where would you propose exchanging Isabella for your weekly visit? I mean, I, I, I don't have any with any... Where, I mean, um, Lonnie and I hang out with Isabella together now. And and so wherever is fine for him, I guess in the middle of where we live. He's, I invited him to see my apartment and like, come hang out with me and, and be with me and Bella, the three of us together. Um, I had somebody call out the last couple of days at work unfortunately but we were gonna spend the like day together and do stuff here in Bastrop the three of us so exchanging the child at some one of the stores there in South Park Meadows that's halfway it's about 40 minutes for me but I don't mind I guess okay I, I don't know that's why I'm asking you uh but if you don't yeah. have a specific response then I can certainly ask Mr. Patton. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think South Park Meadows is is a a fair meeting point for the both of us. That's a big area. Is there a specific location store that you have in mind? The Target in South Park Meadows. Okay. Miss uh, Tresorati, did you have an opportunity to read Miss Swinton's report? No, ma'am. You didn't. I didn't know I was allowed to. I know that uh, part of the announcement was that you felt comfortable ex disclosing your location now to Mr. Patton, but is there anyone outside of this case, any parties outside of this case in which you would feel in danger if your address or location was part of a public record? Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want anyone to know, even his family, not that I'm not, not even his family. Um, and it's just because I don't, there's a lot going on other than this with the murder case and my mom dying. Okay. I would just prefer that people don't know where I live. Well, I, I can understand your preference, but that's not the legal standard. Okay. So because this okay. is the case that involves a child, it is required that parents disclose their locations unless there's sufficient reason. With Lonnie, it's okay. And in terms of and and I think you've made that clear, but in terms of of that it could cause you or the child or some imminent harm, okay, uh, and mm -hmm. and getting that uh, from the the report 
from Ms. Swinton that there may be some parties that you may have some concerns, but I want to hear that from your own testimony, not from what I'm reading. So is 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 that uh, is there a yes. concern with some third parties not part of this case that could cause you to to feel like you're you may be in danger? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you re received uh, what you feel are credible threats against you and your or your body from these third parties? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, you you did ask about you you were a little confused why uh, Miss Swinton would have recommended drug testing. All right. Now, it, it seems that there were some allegations that were made, according to Ms. Swinton, by Mr. Patton, that there were some concerns with drug use. Did you make a disclose? Did you disclose something to Mr. Patton about uh, some drug use that you may have engaged in? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, you know, Lonnie and I were young when we met. We would smoke weed together sometimes. Um, before Isabella, but I mean, he knows that I don't do drugs. Um, even weed me, gives me anxiety, but no, I've never told him that I do drugs. Um, cause that's not true. He did ask me when we were at the courthouse, the, the most recent time, um, he asked me in the waiting room if I do cocaine, which obviously the answer is no, I don't. Is there anything else you would like to add to your testimony? I'm really trying hard. Um, with everything that happened, I, you know, I lost my home, I lost my car, I lost everything, my support system. Um, and in that time I've gotten a promotion at work. I've been transferred to a store that's staying open because my boss thinks that I do a good job. I'm consistent with my job and I, I try my best. I'm also still processing um, and I would do anything for my kid. They are the only thing that I have. They're the most important things that I have. I'll do whatever I have to do to, to be with them, but I am a good mom and I'm a safe person for them. Thank you. Mr. Patton, uh, uh, I guess I need some clarification on your, with your testimony, uh, some of the report from this uh, Swinton uh, seems to be a little different from your testimony. So did you, I just have to ask again um, about the drug concerns, drug usage concerns. Did you or did you not have concerns about that with Mr. Azorati? No, no concerns. The only, or I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So the only thing that I told Jennifer or Ms. Swinton was that um, the boyfriend that got murdered, he actually reached out to me a couple weeks before he got murdered. Um, and that he told me that Allie was doing cocaine. And so that was the only thing I've ever told Jennifer. I never had proof of it or anything. It's just his word of mouth. And so I sent those uh, documents over to Sw Miss Swinton. Okay. There was also some reports that you may have some concerns about certain photographs that Miss Swinton, excuse me, that Miss Trezorati may have taken of herself. Is that still a concern? Yes, that is a uh, very concerning to me. Okay, is that something that is still occurring? From what I know, yes, I I've seen it here in February. All right. Uh, I asked Mr. Trezorati regarding a suggestion for exchanging the child. She suggested uh, Target, South Park Meadows. Is that an appropriate place, or something you're agreeable with, or was there something else? Uh, so I, I would agree with that if if Ali and Mr. Trezorati is okay with it. It's more that's closer to my place so i would be okay with meeting her farther north where she's closer to her um somewhere downtown like uh six like i work on sixth street that's where my office is so somewhere around there i feel like would be more in the middle um even a little bit further um up north uh, i don't know much places there but i just think it'd be more convenient uh for miss trezorati to even meet her up more up north for her convenience as well do you have a suggestion um I really don't just because I don't know much places up there, but if there's, I know I can, we can find like a Walmart or Target that's probably off of 35 up north somewhere. That's like public area that we can do a, um, an exchange. If uh, all I can think about is my job, but I don't know if that's even okay with her. 
Okay. Now, Ms. Uh, Trezorati has now, she's reporting to this court that she has, she has a lease. She has her own place. She lives alone. Looks like she's, uh, I, I didn't ask you, Ms. Trezorati, but you have a vehicle now, right? You have transportation? I did. I scrambled and I got a car. Excuse me? You did. I scrambled and I got a new car. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So you do have transportation. Okay. It took me a couple of weeks. Yeah. So Mr. Patton, then is it still your position now that you've heard testimony from Ms. Ms. Uh, Trezorati that she has her own place that supervised possession still? It's just more concerning the people that she associates herself with. Like Ms. Wynn said, her current boyfriend is a felon for violent acts. Um, she's asked me multiple times to try to meet her boyfriend so that she can have Bella around him. And it's something that we have disagreed upon. Um, it's just more of like, the guys that she associates herself with. Um, once the murder happened, she was receiving a lot of like bad threats and stuff. Uh, so I don't, I, it's just, I don't think it's necessarily completely safe where she is. Um, I don't know exactly where she's living, but it's just more of like the threats, um, the boyfriend and who she associates herself with is a negative part about it. Um, her herself <laughs> is, I think is great. Okay. You're okay with Ms. Trezorati I mean, you don't have you don't have a concern with Ms. Trezorati having possession of her daughter. It's more if there are uh, the, these individuals whom you're concerned about are air around. And if Ms. Trezorati has testified that when she has possession of her daughter, it's only going to be for her. And this is her time with her child. Uh, do you have any reason to believe to that to a statement made by Ms. Trezorati is that's not something she's being truthful about? I want to say yes. I don't feel very comfortable. And like, that's the truth because this is what happened with the person that got murdered, her ex-boyfriend. She had him around our daughter, Isabella, multiple times. Um, and so it's not something that I don't really, I don't trust, no. Miss uh, Trevorati, what is the name of the of your current uh, boyfriend? His name is Zach. Yes, ma'am. Does he have a last name? Garza. Okay. So besides the current boyfriend of Mr. of, of Ms. Trezorati, Mr. Patton, do you have, is there someone else that you're concerned about? So it's Joshua, uh, Josh, uh, got her ex-boyfriend uh, got murdered, his family and his friends. And that's who Zach is. It's one of his friends. And so it's just like the threats that they receive, they actually try to add me on social media. I don't know what the purpose is of it, if they want to find out who I am or where I live, but it's definitely... Um, that person's family, his gang, his friends, things like that. Yeah. I think Ms. Trezorati would agree with you on those other individuals. She seems to not want them to know where she resides. So I think you're both in on the same page as on that issue. Ms. Uh, Trezorati, I, I failed to ask you. I didn't, I don't, I don't think I heard any testimony. I just uh, heard that there was an agreement for you to not pay support for uh, for your daughter. Help me understand why you do not want to be financially responsible in helping Mr. Patton. So Lonnie and I just in our own daily life, I if he needs something from me for Isabella, um, I I'm happy to help him. Um, he also has said to me that he doesn't want me to pay child support because he wants me to be able to, um, you know, save money and, and have things for her in in my home and, and, and for her and I. He knows that I'm still getting on my feet and, and he has said that, um, like like I said, he if he needs something for her, he'll ask me and, and vice versa. Um, but I it's not that I don't want to be responsible for her um him and i just agree that uh it's better for the both of us to just ask for help from the other person if we need it but he normally you know other than today he's really nice and helpful and actually even this morning he said he doesn't think that we need to pay child support well that's the court's decision i i will tell you both that i don't agree with your with your zero child support agreement Okay. So, you know, Mr. Patton was ordered to pay current support under the current temporary orders. 
And so, uh, which was the right thing to do. He's a parent. He had a duty to support. Well, so do you. Okay. I Yeah, I absolutely agree. All right. Um, I, I, I don't know how much money you make. I know how much child support was or, uh, was calculated and suggested that you be ordered to pay, but perhaps you can give me, uh, I would like to hear some testimony with regards to your living expenses, okay? Now that sure. you have yeah. an apartment and a vehicle and that sort of thing. So how much is your rent? My rent is $1,500 a month. Um, that's the base rent okay. plus my electric and water and gas. So I would add about 150 uh, like ballet trash and that kind of thing as well. All right. So it's $1,500 for your rent and then another 150 for your utilities? About, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Your vehicle, do you have a car note? I do, yes, ma'am. It's three ninety six a month. Okay. And um, your insurance? My insurance is really expensive. It's two fifty four a month. All right. And um, about your your a, your, uh -huh, your mobile, how much is that? That one is one seventy six a month. Okay. Any other living expenses that you can provide me? I mean, none of that includes groceries or anything. So groceries, are, I would say, gosh, three hundred a month, four hundred a month. Car rent, utilities. I think those are like the necessities that I can think of. Now, are you gas? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Gas, gas. I would say 150 a month in gas. Okay. All right. Um, are you salaried or you're an hourly worker? I'm salaried. Oh, what is your salary? Fifty-six thousand. Okay. A year. Now, uh, do you receive bonuses in addition to your salary? I am eligible for bonuses. Um, however, because I just got this new store, I haven't been able to receive any yet. Besides uh, the expenses you just testified about, do you have anything else like child support for the other child, any other debts, things like that? I do the same thing like with Lonnie, with my son's dad. If my son needs anything, he'll call me and ask me. And, um, and so I, I try to help in that way. Um, but no child support like order. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Shukir, uh, was there anything else you'd like to add? Any other recall witnesses? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. So Mr. Shukir, you, you've request, requested further temporary orders. In your opinion, this case isn't ready for final orders at this time? Well, Your Honor, more information came to light during the hearing. One that was really significant, I thought, was Miss uh, Trezorati having um, her own apartment now, having transportation. And in my own opinion, given the information that was shared during the hearing, I think in this case there could be um, final orders with a um, step up visitation, perhaps. Okay. So it sounds as though um, the parties are, are wanting to perhaps get final orders after the protective order ex uh, has expired. Is that more is that what i'm understanding they were um, waiting yes your honor and, and during negotiation we were just having uh difficulty coming up with a, a visitation schedule mm -hmm. that would work um so we thought that having a, a temporary order um might make it easier to transition to a, a, a final visitation schedule um but yeah with miss trezorati having her own apartment now and um having you know, solid employment. My my opinion is that perhaps a final order would be appropriate. Okay. Um, it's not clear to me, uh, but it seemed to be the recommendation by Miss Swinton that Mister Patton be the parent that has the right to determine primary residence of the child. Is that the agreement of these parties? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, Your Honor, we I discussed with both parents. What, it, what joint managing conservatorship is. And um, the, both parents agreed that uh, they want a joint managing conservatorship with Mr. Patton being the um, managing conservator or primary managing conservator, Your Honor. Okay. So Mr. Shoker, uh, I heard you talk about that what it would cost Mr. Patton 
to carry the child under his uh, plans at work. Was there uh, an agreement as to reimbursement for those plans or is that something that was waived by Mr. Patton? So, so parties agreed on the cost of the medical and dental, but because both parents were requesting uh, zero child support, I didn't uh, talk with them about whether or not they would be requesting reimbursement. However, when I when I calculated guideline child support for uh, Miss Trezorati, um, I did include credit for her reimbursing Mr. Patton for those amounts. Or cor correction, Your Honor, I, I think I, I may have said that guideline child support for Miss Trezorati would be through six hundred and eighty seven dollars a month. That's actually without the credit for the medical and dental support. Uh, With the credit for the reimbursement, it would be six hundred and eighty three. Okay. And and uh, we calculated Ms. Trezorati's gross monthly income to be a little bit higher than her her salary of fifty you know fifty six thousand dollars a month. Looking at her most recent pay stub, we calculated an average of four thousand six hundred and eighty dollars a month. So so very close, just a, like thirteen dollars more. Yes, Ron. All right, folks. Uh, I'm. I think that uh, being that uh, there has been a change um, where this child has been primarily residing, I don't want to disrupt that. And um, But I think that there needs to be some regular schedule of visits. And so I am going to, to create a schedule um, that hopefully will make up some time for Ms. Trezorati. Before I, I give you uh, the, the decision as to these temporary orders, uh, let me give you the information about the court. Uh, I may have said this already, I'll, I need to repeat it. So I'm the associate judge for the trial support court of Travis County. My decisions can be appealed. So a party in this proceeding that disagrees with my ruling may, may request a new hearing before a district court judge. The time frame to request that is three working days after I sign orders. So Mr. Shuker will prepare the order. Uh, it'll be circulated uh, by DocuSign, just like the first temporary orders. If you disagree with my ruling, your signatures aren't, aren't required. Uh, Mr. Shuker can still send the order to me for my signature, but you will be notified when it's signed. So if at that time, if you would like to request a new hearing, then you have those three days to make that request. If you do decide to do that, um, you can hire a lawyer, you can do it yourself. If you decide to do it on your own, there's a self-help library online on Travis County's court's website. There's also uh, a uh, self-help library at our civil and family courts facility uh, downtown. It's on the second floor. And, you know, I think a, a staff attorney that can kind of direct you in the right place. It still would be your responsibility to get your documents filed, send notice to everyone, get yourselves on the family law docket so that uh, you can get your hearing, your uh, the new hearing held, okay? So uh, under these further temporary orders, I am appointing the parents as joint managing conservators and Mr. Patton will be the parent that has the right to determine the residence under these temporary orders, okay? There will be a geographic restriction for that residence to be within Travis or any contiguous county since you both live in counties that touch Travis, so that I agree with Mr. Shoker that that seems to be the a, a, a good restriction for now. Now, as to possession, I am ordering weekly possession on Mondays. It seems to be the slowest day for, for Miss uh, uh, Trezorati. Mr. Patton is off, um, so it'll be weekly Mondays starting at ten, ending at four. So what I would like for Ms. Trezorati to have that whole day to get reacquainted with Bella, spend some time with her. I will leave it to both of you that if you think that Bella's ready for an overnight and stays over Monday night, I'm going to leave that discretion to both of you as parents to work it out. But if you don't agree, then it'll just be Monday from 10 to 4. So you will meet up at the Target at South Park Meadows and... Um, you will have each other's numbers so that you can text and traffic's horrible in that area. So please be patient, have some grace, um, but make sure that you communicate where your status. That way uh, no one's disappointed, especially little Bella. Okay, she, she's probably gonna look forward to seeing her mommy. 
Okay, so um, that will be the weekly schedule until we come back in, in September. That's a long time, okay? So that's why I'm giving you both the power that if you want to create a different schedule when you feel she's ready, you can do that, okay? And I encourage you to do that, especially after your protective order is expired, that it'll, it sounds like you both are trying really hard to make things work. And, and I'm hoping that these orders will help you do that. Okay, now as to child support, I did deviate from the guidelines, uh, taking into consideration that Ms. Trezorati is going to have to travel further than uh, Mr. Patton to exercise her visitation. So I did reduce the, the amount of support. So it was suggested that child support uh, be set at, according to my calculation, $683. And so I am pushing that down to $585 monthly, and that will start April 1. Also, uh, Ms. Trezorati is ordered to reimburse uh, the cost of insurance to Mr. Patton. Okay, no retroactive child support was uh, requested and waived by the state and, and I guess Ms. Uh, Trezorati, so that's granted. And the release of judgment uh, is approved for the, was owed under temporary orders. I am ordering a third party non-disclosure for Ms. Trezorati. She's still required to update Mr. Patton of her information but it's not going to be part of the court record. So that way it protects her, her location. I think both parents had some strong concerns about that. All right. Um, I don't recall if, let's see. I think the issue of court costs was reserved, if I'm not mistaken. It was reserved in the temporary order, Your Honor. Okay. Then I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to waive those uh, court costs against either party. So we can address that now. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, what was the time for September the 9th to come back? 8.30 a.m., Your Honor. Okay. And um, September 9th, uh, is that in person? Let's see. I believe it's a yeah. Zoom document. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, do you need anything else, Mr.? Your Honor, did you want to include the electronic communications? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Yes, I saw a lot about that. So, so electronic communication will be ordered. <laughs> and I think uh, what parents are currently doing just whenever Bella is ready she's little you know she's distracted and so whenever she wants to call her mama she can that'll be fine as long as Mr. Patton makes her available uh, that way and she can have that time with her mom yes, your honor. oh your, your honor are, are there any stipulations about who can be present during the periods yes. of visit yes I was going to um uh, enjoying, uh, Miss Trezorati is enjoined from allowing um, the individual, that Garza, Mr. Garza, he's, he's, he's ordered to not be present during uh, the possession, uh, whenever Miss Trezorati has possession of the child, and also individuals that have uh, made uh, threats to Miss Trezorati, she knows who they are, uh, those individuals are not to be present during uh, her time with the child. Okay, so to, and and so I'm gonna count on you, Ms. Trezorati, to make sure that you, you know, you take care of that. Don't let people around that are gonna be threatening. I don't know if I missed anything. I think I've got everything. Was there something else, Mr. Uh, Shukar? I think you covered everything, Your Honor. Yes, uh, just insert some language that the Garnet litem is dismissed. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. I think that'll do it. It's a, It was a very long hearing. I, I know I kept y'all, and I appreciate your patience. So, uh, are we done, Mr. Shukar? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. What was the amount that you said he was behind? Uh, as of October the 31st of 2020, according to this pay record that I have, um, he owes $1,710.34 in child support and $25 in medical support. Your Honor, what about the child support that was paid since the child support was terminated? You'll have terminated? to take that up with the Attorney General's office, Mr. Smith. I don't okay. have any jurisdiction, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith is ordered to pay Crystal Smith the amount of $765 a month in child support. Um, I'll order Ms. Smith to maintain the health insurance that she has on the child 
and he will be ordered to pay an additional $150 a month in cash medical. Uh, Mr. Smith will pay back the judgment that he owes for child support by paying an additional, um, oh, let's say $30 a month on the child support, and we'll say uh, $5 a month on the medical support. 